Hey everyone, Bess McCarty here, Victoria, Kansas with the Ask Bess Show. Today the topic is the power of kindness. Why is that powerful? <laughs> because it opens people's hearts, it opens doors to be able to receive what we want to say. And it creates a lot of good feelings both within us and another person. Um, so you might have heard that this um, this advice, never speak unless, you know, always make sure that what you're, what you're about to say is true, necessary, and kind before you open your mouth right? Uh, before you speak your mind. <laughs> and I have looked at these and I think the hardest one for me is kindness. I thought I could do them all, no problem. Oh yeah, I got it down, you know, but then I start hearing myself sometimes speaking to people like in a short way, an impatient way, uh, even a critical or judgmental tone. And um, I said, okay, Bess, you don't have this mastered. You gotta, you gotta work. I want to work on this some more um, because no matter if I'm right, I think that love is more important than being right. I'd rather be loving than right. Because right, what is that? Except just the way that our at that we, we've trained ourselves to try to be safe in our behaviors and our life and everything. I call it a false sense of security. You know, the um, moral certainty that we have. Yes, it must be this way. And it helps us to live our life and to order our life and to stay what we think is on track. But we can become so dogmatic in that and so so stubborn and forceful and even want other people to think like we do or to stand our ground so firmly lest someone change our mind that this plays out in wars, in politics. We see this all the time, you know, in the protests going on and everything. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes even on social media, sometimes people are not very kind to each other in the in the name of what is right. I mean, people have been killed, wars have been, wars have been waged in the name of what is right. So uh, I realized this the other day when someone asked me uh, about a project that I you know, asked if I might get behind this project. And um, I said, okay, it sounds pretty good, but may I play devil's advocate? And I began listing, you know, what about this? And what about this? And why is it better than this? And everything, and the person who was excited about the project started losing enthusiasm and said, gee, I was excited about this before I started, you know, when I started talking with you, but not now. And um, I realized that I should have prefaced that by saying, um, if you want me to get behind this project, then there's certain things that I um, need to understand because I think other people will think this way too. And that could have um, prefaced a little more kindly, a little softer, <laughs> being a little bit softer with that. So I'm realizing though that very, very infrequently do we want to really want to look at ourselves. So very infrequently, very rarely does somebody really want my advice <laughs> or to see something about themselves that I see that they might not. It takes a really strong person full of self-esteem and commitment maybe to a better service or commitment to their mission to be able to receive any even helpful cons constructive criticism. Something I learned from my friend Jeffrey David Gamble is he, he likes to say this, and I like this a lot. He says, um, if I saw something that I thought could help you, but it may be uncomfortable to hear, would you still want to hear it? You know, and when he said that to me, I just can't help. My curiosity says, of course I would, you know. But what that does is it gets permission, and it prepares me to receive something that might be uncomfortable. And what I like to add to that is I like to do the sandwich technique. I might edify or compliment or acknowledge the person for something that, that is working well that I, that I, or that I like. And then I might offer that constructive um, idea or suggestion. And then I might sandwich it or finish with another thing that I really appreciate or like or edify or acknowledge that person with. So I sandwich it in between two compliments, let's say. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe this can help someone. I have more stories, but I'll try to keep this this short. And if you got benefit, I'd love if uh, I heard that below in the comments um, or a question that you might have or a tip or comment, a story that you might have, how you've been able to use kindness or when someone used it with you, what it meant to you. And also remember to, if you like these videos, to subscribe, share, like, um, and let me know what else you'd like uh, me to cover in future topics. Be glad to do that. Thank you for being here. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.